Hello good people, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching us from. This is the Wiser Woman Forum brought to you by Jane Favor. Jane Favor is the daughter of the Most High King. I am a wife, I am a mother, and by the grace of God, I'm also a minister of the good news. And as always, I'm excited to be coming to you, bringing to you the Wiser Woman Forum for the next few minutes. So gather around, call a friend, share this program with someone that you care about and I believe that we shall be blessed together and that we shall move into the purpose that God has in store for us. It's been getting on and on about purpose. We've been at it. We've been looking at all the dimensions to make sure that none of us shall not enter the purpose for which we were created for. We shall not live a mediocre life. That is not our portion in Jesus' name. And we talked about sharing the good news. Yes, last week we said part of our responsibility is to share the revelation that we have received, the illumination. And that is the news that Jesus' law is our Lord and Savior. And that means we have the responsibility of being the beautiful feet that take the good news to others. And we were talking about the bridge between man and God regarding time. And we said God, we, his time, we call it the Kairos. And we talked about the Kronos being our time where we, we are talking about our normal day to day. So, God is busy doing his thing. We talked about he's the one who is concerned about the sun, the rotation of the earth, the, the feeding of the wild animals, balancing who is born and who dies. He has so much to do. And that means we cannot even bother ourselves with what he does. And is that why some of the mysteries are hidden from us? It is why he doesn't burden us with all of that information about eternity. He only reveals to us that which he knows will be to the benefit and will help us and equip us for our success for life here on earth. So if we are looking at God and we looked at some scriptures that say that no one can understand the mystery of how God does what he does, just like a baby that is growing in its mother's womb. That being said, today we look at the part of man. So God is doing what he's doing. What is man doing? So that we can connect the two with the bridge that is time. So today we shall be looking at a few scriptures. God help us that we may be able to cover them because they are crucial for your understanding. And remember, we talk about the wisdom that comes from the word of God. This is not about an opinion of men. And that means we have to read the word a lot. We must look at scripture because it's what we we take before God and we say, in your word you have said. And that means you are you are you have to fulfill this because the word of God is his very constitution that he works with. That when you go before him, you tell him it is written and he has to fulfill because it is his word and he holds his word higher than even his name. So we look at the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 4. This is the work of man. When God is doing what God is doing, what is man doing? The word of God says, don't sit there watching the wind. I love the wind. Let me pause. I love the wind because wind is mysterious. You don't see it. You can't control it. You can't, you can't catch it. The wind is mysterious. Uh, it, it is like trying to, to, to explain how a baby grows in its mother's womb. So the wind is mysterious. So don't sit there watching the wind. Do your work. Don't stare at the clouds. Get on with life. I love that. Because more often than not, when we hear we have a purpose and God tells us, for I know the plans I have for you, we pause. It's like we stand and we are hoping that he will do something so that our life can begin. It's like we stand still and we cannot do anything. It's like I'm waiting on God. I am waiting on God. Even applying for another job becomes hard. Even changing anything in your life becomes so hard because your word is, I am waiting on God. Our God has a purpose for my life. I am waiting for that purpose. We stand still. It's like we are frozen. And the word of God is saying, don't sit there watching for the wind. Don't sit there waiting for the kairos. The kairos is when God will come and shift your life. Don't sit there and say, I am waiting for the kairos. Mimi leo hata sitoki kwa kitanda na ngoja mungu. Hapa, hapa, after morning devotion, nakanda ni aduve, mimi si move. I am waiting on that kairos. God leo ni leo. Kuja leo. Because unless you come, I cannot move on with your life with my life. God is saying, no, that is not how I work. That is not how you work. So what are you supposed to do with your normal day to day, with that 24 hours, with that seven days a week, with that 30 days a month? What are you going to be doing? Don't sit there watching the wind. Do your work. What work do you have? Do you, do you take care of the children's home? Are you a teacher? 
Are you currently supposed to be, you know, pre marking homework? Are you a, a preacher preparing a sermon for that service? Are you, are you a leader supposed to be doing the, the due diligence, reading book, going to, to workshops to make sure that you're the best leader that you can be? Do your work. Don't stare at the clouds. Get on with your, with your life. Clouds symbolize a symbol of rain coming. So when you're looking to the clouds, like for a farmer, uh, they, when they see the clouds, they know the rain is coming. So they're like, you know, we wait for the rain so that we can plant. It's trying to show you, don't let that sign keep you from doing what you need to do. Because remember, last week we said, God is mysterious. You cannot understand him. You, it is not your business to do what he does. So he is saying now, don't wait on me. Don't stare at what I'm doing. Don't be busy saying, nilisikia jana athi li rotate much slower. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. You focus on your thing. Do what you have to do. We skip all the way to verse 6 because verse 5, we read it last week. It was where he was saying, just as you'll never understand the mystery of life forming in a pregnant woman, so you'll never understand the mystery at work in all that God does. That is verse 5. So verse 4 is yours. Verse 5 is God. So verse 6 is also you and me. Go to work in the morning and stick to it until evening. Without watching the clock, you never know from the from moment to moment how your work will turn out in the end. That is your assignment. See, God is so good that even when he's talking about you, he puts the word clock there. He puts the word time there because he knows you, you are on a clock. He is not and he is never late and he never comes too early. But you are on a clock. So he tells you, don't let this news about purpose overwhelm you. Don't get depressed. You're like, eh, and I've been so frustrated at work. I've been thinking about quitting. quitting. And the next thing is, Monday you write your resignation letter and you tell your boss, me, me, I am going to pursue purpose. I have been reading and researching on purpose and the wise woman has really motivated me. I am so zealous. I'm going to change the world. No, that is not what God is saying. You must be wise. It means you must understand that he connects the dots. That what you're doing here, you must ask him, open my eyes that I may see. leo. Whether you are a teacher, whether you are you are like myself right now, seated here, I have to ask God, what is, what is it that you desire me to do in the here and the now? What work must I do? Mark you, I don't sit here the whole day. This is just for a few minutes, and I've been saying that a lot because it's about time. I've been saying it's just for a few minutes. After this, I will go on with something else in my life. I will not sit around waiting for the next time I'll be doing the Wise Woman Forum. I have a family. I keep saying I am a wife. I have a husband to take care of. I have children to take care of. I have work to put my work, my, my work to put my hands to do so that God can have something to bless. That is my life. Get on with it. Do something. After you've listened and you've been encouraged and you've been edified, now go and do something. And it is not uncommon for you to listen to somebody. I don't know about you. There are some people you listen to. Personally, I, I, I have I've, I've, I've loved to listen to Miles Monroe. And once I listen to him, you might think that you know you just feel like going and changing your life drastically you can listen to somebody like Joel Austin he's a hope teacher and he motivates you so much and he tells you have to have to watch even the friends you have and the next thing you feel like hey man say my husband is not been a very good friend to me lately I feel like unfriending him you have to have understanding that after all is said and done what is it that you are supposed to be doing right now so after that is said and done we go to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and uh, that is verse 1 to 4. And it is important. This episode we shall read several scriptures because it's really important. And I will read. A good reputation is more valuable than costly perfume. And the day you die is better than the day you are born. Yes, that is the word of God, not me. Most of us love the day of birth, not the day of death. We even don't like in our African culture, you don't talk much about death. It is not, it is not becoming to talk about death. You are supposed to be shh about it and you celebrate the ones who are born and we avoid anything that is too dark because, you know, we like the bubbly and the jovial. What does the word say in verse 2? Better to spend your time at funerals. <laughs> this is not me, for sure, for sure. You go read your Bible. This is the word of God. Better to spend your time at funerals than at parties. After all, everyone dies. So the living should take this to heart. Verse 3 says, Sorrow is better than laughter, for sadness has a refining effect on us, 
verse 4 says, A wise person thinks a lot about death, while a fool thinks only about having a good time. Oh, I know this scripture doesn't sound so fun. When we think of wisdom, we want to hear about how to become silver and gold. We want to hear about how to become wealthy. We are told that uh, she holds you know, wealth in her hand and a good name and honor and rewards and you shall be seated with kings. That's what we want to hear. But this is also wisdom. And the word of God is a double-edged sword. It cuts both ways. It can affirm, it can rebuke. It can change your life for the better or it can set you up to go to eternal destruction because remember Jesus Christ is the rock that will either save you or become your stumbling block. It's up to you. So why are we talking about death? Because we are looking at the bridge that connects God and man and that is time. Death reminds you that you are on a clock. Anytime you spend your time with some old people, they will often show you just how fragile time is. If you sit around with somebody older, and I, I mean, for me, my parents are in their 70s. For you, your parents could be in their, four, in their 50s or early 60s. So you might need to spend some time with your grandfather or grandmother, somebody in their 80s. You will realize their conversation is completely different. What seems to move them is, is not anything that probably for you is anything much. Yet what moves you to them is like an anthill. The reason we do that is because they bring us to focus. They help us to be able to understand what is important and what is not. By looking through their lenses, we are able to demystify our so-called life. And as a young person, you're there thinking, I, I want to commit suicide. My life is valueless. That guy left me? I mean, after all I did for that guy, you mean he's my, you know, my high school crush. He's my university crush. And he told me he would never leave me. Yet he did a white wedding. Kwanza ililetu hata kwa TV station, kwa hizi mashu programs, zama big weddings. How could he leave me? Yet he said I was his. I am going to kill myself. You sit with an eight-year-old and tell them that story and you will see how your story will shrink and will be so insignificant in the grand scale of the life that you're yet to live. It is why we must come to focus. Think about death. It is not telling you that lose hope. This is not the death of despair, apana. This is the death of refocusing you. This is the death that the stories you hear, all these stories in different ways and in different ways you're told, that at your deathbed you'll not be asking, by the bank yangu ya ikwe, bank balance yangu ya account fulani, ni pesa ngapi. You'll not be asking, by the way, exchange rate ya dollar ni ngapi at your deathbed. That will not be your concern. Probably you'll be asking, na my grandson, I'm a fake. I'm a baby yangu mume muona. My son, whoever was in the US, I'm a land. I want to see him one last time. Those are the things you'll be thinking about. But when we are young, we don't think of those things. Why? There is the illusion that I have forever. Because when I am 25 years old, it looks like 100 years, 70 years from now. I mean, what will I be doing for 75 years in the kingdom of God? Kuokoka sahi, ui ni mapema, apana. So, King Solomon, in his wisdom, he's telling you, spend some time at funerals. It doesn't have to be the physical funeral. Actually, sometimes spending time with the old people can feel like a funeral. Because all they ever talk about, they repeat the same stories. The, the best days of their lives are gone. All they have is history. And sometimes you might feel down. But when you listen carefully, you will learn something. Something that will save you time today. Something that will refocus you. Something that will make you understand what is important and what is not. So, that being said, we go to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10. So, knowing that, knowing that one day, Every man shall die. Knowing that death is not sup supposed to be a curse. It's supposed to be a promotion. When you think of it, that when you leave your purpose, when the day comes, you shall be promoted to glory. You shall not just die like a mere man. You shall not just go just like that because you shall live a life of purpose. And on the day of your departure, you shall be promoted to glory. It is why we gather here. It is why we take up our cross and we follow Christ because he says when we give up our life for his sake, then he shall resurrect us with him and we shall sit us at the right hand of, you know, at the right hand of the Father. We shall be in Christ Jesus, in him as he is seated at the right hand of the Father. That is where we are. That means when we go at funerals, we don't go there to remind ourselves oh, we are doomed to die one day and that means I can do what I want when I want because after all I'm doomed to die. We remember that a day is coming 
for us to be promoted to glory. And that means we become more energetic to put in the work when we still can. When I can come here and tell you, come to Christ, I do so. When I can come here and tell you, please beware that these 24 hours shall never come to you again. Every day dies. After 24 hours, we bury that day. That day is gone, never to be seen again. It doesn't matter what you did. That day will never be seen again. So if that is the case, why not spend my 24 hours well? Why not spend this year well? Why not spend my month well? That is what we see in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. Whatever you do, do well. For when you go to the grave, there will be no work or planning or knowledge or even wisdom. That is food for thought. That work is for us here and now. That it's up to you to decide. God gave you life. And I get it. You didn't vote for it. He chose to bring you here. That is why we say God is mysterious. That is his business. But your business is, I will do what I must now. I will do what I should today. Whatever it is. However small or however big, I will trust the almighty God, the author of, the, of, of, of this big universe that even the greatest minds have not yet understood. That everything I do today will culminate to a beautiful destiny. And that when the day of promotion to glory comes, my life shall be celebrated of those people who changed my generation, of those people who changed my family, that my children shall be blessed because I chose to walk in the ways of righteousness, that I shall have a legacy to build on, that I shall live an inheritance, not just land and property, but an inheritance of righteousness, of integrity, of godliness and the people when they look to my family they shall have a tale to tell that kwahiyo jami they believe in the lord for that jami no matter what they face through the good and the bad they remain faithful that we can point to them and say that household they trust in the almighty god that is for you to do and we are told whatever you put your hands to do do it well because as God is busy in his own work, as he's doing the one that we cannot do, I am also busy doing that which I can do. And what is it that you're doing? It is up to you to know. Because I don't know. I cannot see you there at home. I cannot see you from wherever you're watching us from. I don't know whether it's at night or it's noon or it's evening. I don't know. It's God has arranged for you to listen to this program at the appointed time. But after you hear it, will you put your life back to order? Will you be okay with knowing that it's true? I know I am waiting for a promotion and I don't know that day. That is Kairos. That is for God. But I am trusting him for that promotion. So before the promotion comes, I will be reading a book. I will do, I will download a few, a few tutorials on how to be a better secretary, on how to be a better manager. I will take some classes online to learn how to do that thing I'm trusting God for. Most of us who are trusting for marriage are busy at the, our knees, always saying, God, where is my husband? I'm waiting for my husband. Get off of your knees. Arise. Go for Bible study. Go to church on Sunday. Chagua ile service matini. Ma, 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 majenzi wa meja. Kama wana raukanga service ya kwanza. Hata weenda ya kwanza. Kwa waza hewa naenda kikuyu service ama vernacular service. Usiende hiyo changamkia hiyo ya kwanza. Enye wako. That is you doing your work. You cannot trust God for a husband. And then stay in the house all day. You never leave the house. Yes, you work online. I understand. But every now and then go to the shop. Otherwise, how will you be located? Utaonekania wapi. There is a part for us to do. And sometimes we take the things so seriously we think work is only that thing you go to eight to five or that thing that you get paid to do we forget that work is everything that we put ourselves to it's that tiny thing when you're washing your clothes when you're doing the dishes that counts because everything you put your hands to, hands to the clock keeps ticking some of us as mothers when you're with your children, especially when they are home for the holidays or during midterms, you realize your time shrinks because when they come, that they need you. Your husband comes home. He needs you to talk to him. He needs you to sit with him. He needs you to look at him when he's talking to you. You cannot be doing dishes when he's at home. Otherwise, marriage itaanza kuleta shida. So, unajipanga, unafua manguo, unajua jamii na kuja jioni, you spend time with your husband. Unajua watoto wanakuja midterm, unajua venye mutapanga hiyo jamii yote. Why? Because all those things count when it comes to purpose. 
I am a wife and that does not mean I cannot be a mother. It does not mean I cannot be a sister. It does not mean I cannot be a minister. All those are my jobs and it is up to me to be ask God for wisdom so that I will do them well. So that being a minister does not get in the way of being me, me being a mom. Being a mom does not get in the way of me being, being a, a, a wife uh, to my husband. Are you, are you getting it? That we have so many things. Please don't mistake that I, uh, destiny is just a, a pulpit, a, a place where you're visible, and that you must be on a certain channel on TV for you to feel you've reached destiny, that you must be seen on Sunday for you to feel you've reached destiny. It's everything you do, every tiny thing you do. And I will encourage you with this, with this uh, example. Before King Saul was anointed to be king, he was out and about looking for a donkey. Yes! looking for a donkey that was lost. He was out and about looking for his father's donkey. And as he was looking for the donkey, he was told of a man of God who could help him know where the donkey was. That there was a prophet. Can you imagine they were putting a prophet to tell them where a lost donkey was? Yes. As he was doing so, a servant there is a man of God in the land. And he tells him, how can we go to him empty-handed? And I have something small. Let's go. Only not knowing that when he encounters the prophet, that he would come to his Kairos moment. That in a flash of a second, he moved from looking just for a donkey to being anointed as the next king. So was David. David was a last born. Alikuwa na, uh, you know, the way last borns are, me am a last born. I know how it goes. Kazi yako ni kutumwa hii, kutumwa hii, kuchunwa, maskiwa hapo, kufukuzwa hapo, kienda mahali your bra big brothers are talking, they're like, we toka hapa, atuonge stories za watoto. You know, tukazi tu, tungine tunakatu, hivi tunakatu awana. Kimililia hii, enda umuage hii, madhia na kutuma kitu wata iku hapo next, ata hezi chukua oka. Yes, that is you. Probably you feel it is so menial. So menial. So was David. David aliitwa na baba yake akaambiwa, go and check on your brothers and then come tell me how your brothers are doing. Because their brothers were doing something important. They were at a battle. Can you imagine? Him he was just about out and about, tending to a few sheep as they say. And I'll look at your brothers. But when he went to fulfill that menial task, he went and found a guy who had been tormenting the nation of Israel. And that is the story of David and Goliath. He was just busy doing things that seemed to be meaningless. Meaningless. But they are important. Because those things, they train you. They equip you. They build you up. They form a character in you. You now have a purpose. You're able to wake up at the right time. You're able to manage your time. As you're balancing between husband, wife, children, children, ministry, whatever it is that you're balancing in your life, you're becoming a better person. That the day of Kairos, when it comes, you shall be better suited to step into that castle. Because you and I are king and queens. We are nothing less. And a king and queen does not mean that you must wear a tiara and wear the, the robe, the purple robes. No. It means that that is who we are. Whether we are wearing a dust coat, whether we are in the kitchen, whether in the, in the garden, it does not change that is who we are. And we walk with that awareness that whatever we've been asked to do that the good works that were prepared for us to do ahead in time before even the foundations of the earth were laid down that it counts so put your hands to that which you're supposed to do wacha kuchungulia kuuliza breakthrough nilini god will surprise you that is the word of god that as you're busy moving out and about as you're busy in that kibanda as you're busy in whatever assignment that you have to do today that is where god will find you he is not lost he is the same God that would feed Elijah with a bird of the air and now is locate anywhere. He is the same God that is able to send angels on your way so that they can come in the nick of time because he will not let you die before you see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That is the portion of the righteous. When you're crying out to him, he will make sure that when the time is right, he will locate you. He is the one who rose Lazarus from the dead. It did not matter whether mourners were in the compound he was still risen from the dead and a gathering of mourning turned to joy that is the god we serve stop looking at the clouds stop listening for the wind move do it and do it well believe that no matter how small that it will culminate to the day of kairos moment next episode we shall now connect the kairos and the chronos now you know that your chronos matters because it's in the chronos that you encounter the kairos and you must be doing what you need to do so that god can come and meet you in the fight yet. You cannot be lazing around hoping that he will do something to change your life. He only works with those who are diligent. Even as he's calling the fishermen, they were busy fishing. Even as he was calling
talking to David, he was tending to the sheep. Even as he was busy calling Saul, for Saul was busy being a good son to his father. That is something that you must put to note. Arise and do something with your day. And believe that God will encounter you where you are. And your life shall be changed. And you shall testify that truly we serve a God that is able to bring us into the fullness of our purpose. Be blessed and shalom.